Why should insects have all of the fun when it comes to pollination? Well, they don't. There's a lot of birds out there that contribute to pollination and they're just as important. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank our sponsors. The Garden Home blog is made possible by Gilbert H. Wild and Son, who've been growing beautiful perennials since 1885. Ralston Family Farms, a farm family producing delicious rice for your table. First Community Bank, whose heart is in the community, as well as Sun Patients, Super Cal Petunias, and Dragon's Breath Celosia, and Crystal Bridges, Museum of American Art. Check out my website to learn more about the brands we love. Now, when I say that birds are important pollinators, they are. Uh, maybe not as much as insects. The insects do a lot of work, but we can't dismiss our wonderful little acrobats of the sky, the hummingbird, as well as some of its other friends, such as the sunbird, the spider hunter, and the honey creeper, all fun names. But these birds are, well, interesting in that they often have feathers that will allow sticky pollen to attach to them. They go from one flower to the next and hence pollination. But what's interesting about the flowers is it seems to be across the board, bright red flowers or flowers with red centers are extremely um, of interest to birds um, and those that produce a lot of nectar. Obviously, it's a source of food for them. And the secondary benefit is that they're carrying pollen from one plant to the next. We're all about creating an environment of diversity here at Moss Mountain Farm. And you see that probably best of all right here in the vegetable garden this time of year. It's a very warm, almost the end of summer day, and there's a lot of activity going on. Granted, mostly with insects, but if you look closely, you'll see lots of hummingbirds darting here and there. One of their favorite plants is this one, which is called the cigar plant or kufia. Um, this one is referred to as vermilionaire, and it really is quite fantastic. This is just one example of the many plants that we plant in this part of the garden, well, really around the entire farm. And I have to say that even the meadows have become places of habitat and for feeding for another favorite bird of mine. We have a bluebird trail here at Moss Mountain Farm and we love to increase the population of bluebirds and we have over the past 12 years that we've been here. So why don't I show you a little bit about our bluebird program. You see bluebirds eat insects during the time in which they are raising their young, but in the winter they also eat fruits and berries. And so we try to plant lots of plants around that will keep some of them hanging around here because they're so beautiful to see throughout the entire year. So you've caught us at a time of the year when we're making some well, we're doing a little house cleaning with the bluebird boxes. As I mentioned, I'm crazy about bluebirds. They're so beautiful around the farm and all our visitors are crazy about them. That's why I put in this very long bluebird trail. Now, if you wanna attract bluebirds to your garden, you really need open space. And we've got plenty of open space out here at Moss Mountain Farm. And what you wanna do is you wanna site these bluebird boxes about every hundred yards, okay? The little guys are territorial. And what you also want to do is, I think, because these have been up for 12 years, if you can believe it, um, you want to put them on a pole with a baffle. And this baffle keeps, you guessed it, snakes and raccoons from getting up in here and getting into the, the bluebirds, mainly the eggs and the babies. So let's see if anybody's home. Anyone home? It sounds like they're not in. It wouldn't be this time of year necessarily. And here you can see last year's nest. If you look in there a little closely. And what we'll do is we'll clean this up this year and the scouts will come around or there's some that actually hang around here through the winter and they'll start working on those nests very diligently early on. Now, I wanna say that these bluebird boxes have held up very well. I love the pivot door on it like this and this little stay keeps it in place. And this is a new one we're getting ready to add. I always add more each year. And this is made of Eastern red cedar. You see it flaps down. The same model as this one. Again, this one's 12 years old. We just put some paint on it to help preserve it. They've held up really well. Even this little plastic stay has held up extremely well. 
and they come with a <clears throat> couple of screws where you can mount them. A lot of people will mount them on a fence post, but you see, I think that just gives a predator a leg up, if you will, um, in to, to get into these boxes. So that's why I prefer the pole and the baffle on them. And so we're gonna put about 10 more of these out. I think maybe a dozen actually. We're gonna go all the way down past Poultryville. If you've been here, you know where, where I'm talking about. We're gonna go all the way down this way and we're gonna space these about 100 yards apart. And hopefully in the next couple of years, we will triple fold the bluebird population here at Moss Mountain Farm. Now, one of the things that we're also doing is we're planting more habitat for them. Mentioned earlier, that the food and the and the and protection for them is really important. So we plant a lot of hollies. They will eat holly berries. Uh, they actually like dogwood berries, and who doesn't love a beautiful dogwood tree in their garden with those beautiful white flowers or pink or red, depending on the variety that you have. But they'll eat the red berries in the winter. And the other thing that they will eat, which is was always a surprise to me, is if you've looked closely on eastern red cedar. Um, and that's the material these boxes are made of. They have little blue berries. It's a form of juniper, Juniperus virginiana, and they'll eat those little blue berries. So those are three really good plants for bluebirds to kind of get them through the winter. I'll also add that we have crab apples in our heritage apple orchard, which ties back into the pollinator theme very well. And those little tiny crab apples through the winter uh, hold a lot of nutrition and little seeds there for the for the bluebird. So if you really want to get into bluebirds, maybe you want to build your own bluebird box, I've got a set of plans on my website. So just go to pallensmith.com and download those plans and get to work. Create some housing for bluebirds. They'll appreciate it. Thanks for following along. If you liked what you've seen, please like it and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And if you'd like notifications on new content that we're putting up, which we do weekly, uh, just ring the bell and we'll make sure you get that. And also go to our website, pallensmith.com and get our weekly newsletter. We'll tell you all about what's going on here at the farm. And hey, we hope you'll come see us sometime.